today we've got Bob Lawton. Hello, Bob. Hello. He Hi, guys. He owns the front spot. Been in the business for years. And Dick Tamposi. Nick, say hi to the camera for How you doing? How you doing? Roll. You know, you, what year did you come here, Bob? Oh, I started down in the Weirs in 1952. Uh, that is about 66 years ago. And um, finally um, um, put together enough money so we could get a piece of land up here in 1964. So that's how the whole thing uh, got going. Um, when I started down in the Weirs, I had no money, so I bothered, I borrowed 750 bucks from my grandmother, and that's all it took. I got my brother to help me, and we uh, built a nine-hole indoor mini golf, and uh, got other things ready, and opened up in, in uh, 1952, and we were packed. We built a mini golf, small one, nine holes, 35 cents a round, and it was busy right from the beginning. So uh, when we had enough money, we managed to get this land here. We, there's 21 acres here, and we ended up uh, with that uh, less two acres, 19 acres, we got before $1,000. That's how it turned out. And uh, on the other side of the bingo hall, um, we, we got that land because a guy wanted to buy that at the same time that we were buying the uh, rest of the property here, and he paid $12,000 for that two acres on the other side of the bingo hall. And um, that, that was uh, early on in, in the history here. And then uh, later on, when we had seven locations at one time, um, we we needed that land on the other side of the bingo hall, which, by the way, uh, we wouldn't have any parking over there if we didn't have it. And um, and uh, the cost uh, to buy it back from that guy that paid twelve was two hundred eighty thousand dollars. And uh, but we had to have it. And fortunately, we had sold a Florida fun spot. And, uh, and made good money down there, so uh, we were able to finance that with the bank and, and get that two acres over there for $280,000. Um, and it's uh, become, of course, a necessity and, and works out very good for us. Had to have it. It's terrific. <laughs> terrific. One of the great things, for the, sadly, the folks out there don't get to see there's like three shows that go on. There's a show before the show, and, and it's so great listening to you and Nick because you both know the history of the area so much, and I'm sure there's a show after the show. But Nick Nick seems to know so much, our, our co-host. So. Well, one of the great things, too, Bob, that um, you and I met in 1981 or 82 when you were looking for a new location for Fun Spot for expanding your business at the Dover Traffic Circle, and... Um, I wanted to personally have TJ. TJ, if you could come and present uh, this to Bob, uh, it's been a wonder. You've been such huh. a, 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 you know, a great, great presence in here, and and uh, I just wanted to. TJ, thank you so much. You TJ's go. been very helpful with helping us get set up. But thank you, brother. This is a. Yeah, put him on the screen just for a minute. Come on. Let's show his face. Thank you, TJ. Thank you, TJ. But we wanted to thank Bob and Fun Spot, uh, and this is from the Nashua Children's Home and from my family for uh, hosting the Nashua Children's Home. We had over 55, uh, 55 people up here this summer, and Bob hosted us and let us and let the kids play for whatever they wanted to, and they had a time of their life. So we just wanted to have the kids sign this for you. So I just wanted to give this to you. We had it kind of made up. As a matter of fact, the peddler came up with this slogan. Children's memories are long. Kindness is never forgotten. That is and that's amazing. The poet. That is beautiful. So, and I appreciate that. I loved having these kids here. I truly did. Yeah. It's what I like to do. I like to have kids have a good time here, whatever it takes. Well, that's wonderful. And one of the things that I wanted to speak about was 
is that before the show you and I were talking that one of the great things that you love about this and one thing that's been really wonderful for the business is that children are coming here and you're charging them nothing for their birthday parties. Thank you, TJ. You're charging them nothing to come here and enjoy this place, enjoy the all the space that they can have their kids come in. And to me, that is just, uh, it touches the heart of the type of giving person that you are. Thank you very much, Nick. That's, uh, I, I just love kids and fun. Um, uh, Fun Spot is a kid's place, as we know. We deal in kids, and uh, I love, nothing I like better than giving tokens to kids. So I always carry a pocket full of tokens, so, because when I see a kid, I gotta give him some tokens, so. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful having those kind of groups come in here, and uh, whatever I can do to, uh, to help them out, uh, I wanna do that. Yeah. And you do great things, Nick, okay. and, okay. and I know that, and uh, uh, that's why one of the reasons I like working with you. Yeah, well, thank you and, so much. And the other, the other one was when, when I got Dover, which you were selling to uh, my brother and I. Yeah. And that's, that's uh, to me, that's uh, an important part of Fun Spot history because uh, my brother was working for the state uh, Child and Family Services right in Dover next to Emerson Rugg. And he called me one day because we'd been looking for a place in the uh, seacoast, which you were handling for your family. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, Emerson Rugg uh, just left, they're gone. They left paperwork here and everything, they're out of here. So what do you want to do? I said, find out who the agent is that's handling it and I'll come down, just call me. So Nick Tamposi, sitting right here, Nick, uh, was the guy. So I went down and uh, we looked it all over, went through the building. Uh, I, I asked Nick, uh, what's the rent gonna be? And I said, excuse me, John and I stepped aside for as much as 10 or 15 seconds and came back and said, we'll take it. And you said, uh, uh, I have, my brother has, shown it to someone that wants to put a dress shop in here. And uh, <clears throat> so he has first dibs at it. Yep. And so I came back to uh, uh, a fun spot here and was working at the counter there. And, uh, and, and I got stewing. It doesn't take me long to do that. And so I called uh, Nick up and I said, um, I will uh, give you $10,000 uh, because I want to rent that business. I don't care what you do with the 10000 Give it to the guy that wants to rent it or anything. I want, that, I want to rent that building. And I waited a couple of days. You said, okay, I'll talk to my father. I waited a couple of days and I called again. And I remember saying to you, uh, Nick, I, I really want to get that building. I'll up my, my offer to $25,000. And you said, that's a very substantial offer. I'll talk to my father. And when you talk to your father, you, your father said, uh, uh, um, uh, okay, uh, give it to them. And, uh, and um, the other guy has, we've waited long enough for him, something to that yeah. effect. And so, um, it was a it was a wonderful thing for me to uh, have that happen to um, a, a big family like you had, you know, and and um, and end up with that Dover Fun Spot, which was my second favorite place. And when I opened that, I spent three weeks down there, living in a, a motel down the uh, uh, Central Avenue there. Yeah. yeah. And, but I loved Dover. It yeah. was a great place. People were wonderful. So that's great. So we saved you 25000 We didn't charge you. The point is, that's the point, because he called me after that second yep. offer, and he said, I got good and bad news for you. <laughs> the, the good news is that you can have it, and the bad news is you're not going to cost you a cent. <laughs> So Terrific. No, you could you. have said, well, I got it to you for sure. 10 grand. No. So big no. deal. No. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's no. the kind of people I like dealing no, with. You. Really, thank Nick, really. No. Thank you. And uh, it, it was a turning point, I think, in our operational 
yeah. attitude and everything, you know. No, that's really, terrific. Really, really wonderful. Um, you mentioned also prior to um, to the show that uh, baseball uh, has been very big with you, and also your, this is going back to your grandfather that you knew at a very young age. You used to come up here at a very young age, and baseball, and your grandfather was also into publishing. Um, my, my grandfather um, lived in Lowell and had a very nice house next to Irwin's Winnipesaukee Gardens right in the Weirs there. And um, when, when my mother divorced my father in, in Chicago, thank heavens, um, when I was two and John was three, uh, we lived with them. And so that meant we spent summers in their nice house next to Irwin's there and um, and had a great time uh, uh, with my grandfather. And uh, he, uh, he had money, and uh, he made his money in the stock market. Uh, he grew up on a farm with no money. He moved to Lowell to go to high school. He was president of his graduating class in Lowell. And then he got into baseball, and he had teams all over the country. Um, Alabama, uh, Delaware, uh, he owned the Toledo Mud Hens, uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, he was uh, big in baseball, and it was said that he traded more people uh, uh, and did more trades than any other person in uh, baseball at that in those years. And... Uh, so obviously, uh, uh, baseball is in my genes, and and um, I love it. And he also uh, published the Lowell Sunday Telegram, started that, and uh, 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 in the 20s, and eventually sold it. And uh, that uh, has a newspaper. That's why we started the Weird Times. I'm sure that we started that uh, years ago. It's and, in the blood. It's in the blood. It's, it's in the blood. It's a, uh, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. And yeah. so I owe my grandfather that. And um, the the tavern downstairs is called the D. A. Long Tavern, and that's named after Dennis Alfred Long, my grandfather. So, Excellent. so that's how uh, uh, my daughter Sandra uh, named that. Excellent. So, Excellent. and you mentioned also that uh, you employ. Uh, in the in the main in the in the main season, roughly about a hundred people that you were employing in, the in, in the busy seasons. Yep. And uh, in in the off season, uh, we probably have forty or fifty that depend on fun spot for their living. So That's terrific! What a wonderful thing! Wonderful. Um, is there anything that you would like to ask? I just wanted to mention a few things that I noticed. One, you do a lot of machine, like vending machine, history machine games. You refurbish them, you have them refurbished. So when you use this room, which is a family room, hopefully, usually, the moms and the dads are coming back to their childhood, too. It's like they played those games, they remember those games, because, you know. So it, it's like a double whammy throwdown, you know. Um, yeah, we have a, a large shop up back. Well, come on in. This is the shop where I do all my work. There's the carousel. I can tell you, this, this is our favorite horse. It's gorgeous. I changed the color of this three times. And yeah. this. So we can do our own work, we, and you can see the condition of it. It's really bad. Bob He's, is doing all the painting on all the on all the things here. He every all the everything, all the painting, every Incredible. bit of painting. Incredible. And and uh, of course, uh, uh, back to when when I uh, lived in the uh, the weirs with my grandparents. Uh, of course, uh, with my brother. Um, we uh, would uh, go swimming every day, and uh, we had a, a little rowboat that uh, that we had there. That's what we would do. Uh, we have uh, 
um, rode out many times to uh, Spindle Point um, and uh, stuff like that. And I once uh, swam from Weir's Beach to uh, Glendale, um, wow. which, which I could have gone all day, but uh, I got uh, too tired. So after five miles, I, uh, I hauled it in. But, and, uh, and of course, I, I taught water skiing uh, for years in the weirs, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, I uh, scuba dived all over the lake with uh, uh, Chris Ferguson, who's here today, and uh, and his mother Nancy. We used to go all over the lake scuba diving, and uh, so the lake is uh, is um, I I mean it's just the thing. It's it's why I'm here. Um, I, I could have been a, a chemist uh, and been uh, heaven knows where, but choosing to come here, um, it's, it's been a life that uh, I couldn't uh, do any better on, and I love every minute of it. Uh, I'm working 65 hours every week. I'm, I'm at work by 6 o'clock, seven days a week, and that's because I like it. So I'm here early. And they don't come in till 10, so, so I gotta have a snack and some coffee while I'm sitting here waiting for them. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Now this is the Mount Washington Cog Railway. Uh, what I would do is I would measure everything and scale it down to what it was going to be on. I, I would take pictures of things. I would measure them and then I would scale them to fit on a three foot wide um, red boards that, yeah. that they'd fit on. Tremendous, tremendous <clears throat> this, this is a scale model of the North Conway Railroad Station. Holy beautiful smart. station, beautiful. beautiful it's a, it, this is Everything 10 feet is long. The, the original is 100 feet long. And, and when I restored these, um, um, <laughs> Back four years ago, I did everything inside, all new furniture, floor mats, uh, um, people, uh, LED lights. Fantastic. Huh? And the furniture. and It's unbelievable. And, and see, I, I uh, uh, Conway Scenic Railroad, I got one on each side here. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I do that to promote the the railroad. Yeah. I had bought two signs and I put them on here. And so tens of thousands of people can read that exactly. that's still in operation. Yeah. So, so I'm glad to promote them, you know. This, this fun house is the only ornament that is left from our original mini golf. This, this is the bear gun. At, at one point in time, we had four or five of these bear guns. We had picked up at different places that John and I used to go to. If we had a couple of bucks, we could buy a piece of junk and fix it up. And so this one, we had Rick's Restoration restore this. And we didn't want to use it because we don't want a gun here and some kid turning around and aiming at it, even though they can't do anything. They might scare people, so I wouldn't do that. But it's, it's all completely restored. Wow, it's beautiful! You like it? I love it. Yeah, this thing is fun. We're gonna love it. It's as good as new, if not better. The kids are gonna love it. So, Bob, maybe you could tell us a little bit about this boat here that you've had. Okay, this, this boat we had for years. One of the first things John and I went to Boston with a couple of bucks in our pocket and bought this for right there a hundred dollars and uh, <clears throat> when we did it 1960 my son Tim and John's son Randy could fit in that back seat that's how long ago this was and how small they were I, w I would bet that there's been a hundred thousand people come in because they saw that show and they 
road on this when they were toddlers and they got kids now and they want their kid here and uh, sometimes they'll get me to stand here with, with the kid, you know, and with them and uh, so it's a, a wonderful thing for a, a guy or a woman to bring a little kid in and say, hey, I rode in that when I was your size, you know. I, I love uh, the the things we've been doing here in at Fun Spot, and that's why uh, a day like yesterday we were just mobbed here. And 20 years ago, or 10 years ago, even you wouldn't find that here. And uh, you know we have monkey trunks here 10 years now, and and uh, Jordan's ice cream, and uh, all the different Wonderful things we've sense. done. You know, so uh, it uh, just keeps bringing more people, and that's what I want. Uh, it's a kid's place and, and people love bringing their kids here and I'll do anything for kids, so bring them on. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, Bob, I wanted to mention and have you speak a little bit about Live Free and Die. You were a state representative, your mother was a state representative, and your son was a state representative, I believe, right? That's right. And could you just tell us a little bit about the history of the Live Free and Die uh, Mono and I, how you came about that? I, I certainly could. <clears throat> My mother went into the house um, uh, in New Hampshire in 1961, and I joined her in 1969. And when, when I, in fact, I sat next to her, and we sat in the Democrat section at that time. We, the Democrats were uh, good friends of ours, mostly Manchester. And uh, my first bill that, that I brought in was to uh, change what was on the license plates of New Hampshire, which was scenic, and put the state motto, which is live free or die. And um, I went to the uh, state prison at that time and talked to the gentleman that was in charge of, they used to stamp out the plates in the, in the prison. And I found the uh, uh, guy that handled that um, stamping out of the plates. And I asked him how much would it cost uh, to change uh, what's on the plate from scenic to live free or die and he told me $92, because all I got to do is buy a new slug to put into the press and stamp out on the plate. So I said, well, I guess that's not going to stop anybody from voting for this bill anyway. <laughs> so so, so I, was, I was sitting with the governor downstairs here in that nice couch, which I think we'll be at uh, sometime today. And uh, first thing he asked me, he said, uh, Hey, Bob, when you put um, live free or die in the license plates, did you have much opposition? And I said, well, no, I didn't. Uh, it went to the committee, and the committee came out, ought to pass, as they uh, wanted to do. And, uh, of course, I had to speak first on the bill and support it. And I said, who could possibly go against it? The, the balcony was full of military people in uniform, flying flags, and uh, that kind of support is what I got when the bill first came in and I was speaking on it. And, and uh, who could possibly uh, uh, go against that bill? <laughs> so so it, it, uh, it went right through, you know, and, and um, it's been uh, a, a great thing for the state. You know, I think of it that way. Uh, everybody, uh, m most everybody in this country knows uh, when they see live free or die that it's New Hampshire. But does anybody know what any other state has for a, a license plate a label? And I doubt it only if you live in that state. So it's been a wonderful promotional thing uh, for uh, New Hampshire, and um, this is what kind of people we are here in New Hampshire. Um, uh, John, general John Stark, who was our number one general in the revolution, and uh, he's the one that said that on the Battle of Bennington, 32nd anniversary, he couldn't go to it, and so he sent a note and said that uh, Live, I can't attend, 
um, um, live free or die, death is not the worst of evils. Mm. And uh, uh, that's how the state, after World War II, voted to put live free or die as a state motto. So it became a state motto in uh, 45, right after the war. Well, I think we're going to have to wrap the show up now. I wanted to, okay. I wanted to thank Bob so much for uh, letting us do this. Um, my kids have all come here growing up, and uh, it's such a beautiful place to come to. And there is a soul of the lake, and there's a great soul with you. You're a wonderful soul, and we're awfully fortunate to be able to... Uh, have this time with you and uh, re reminisce about the past and and uh, the history of this area, Bob. Thank you very much, both of you. And uh, uh, I love reminiscing about the past. And, and it's amazing to me how much history I have saved in the, in the 66 years I've been doing this. And all you gotta do is go in the mini golf here or in the restaurant downstairs. And I don't know why I saved all that stuff, but I just saved history, everything. Even artifacts or even little things or, yep. or pictures or anything because, uh, you know, all, I think all the Lawtons are historians and we started the museum over there, uh, like one of us the museum. And uh, we just love history and, uh, you shouldn't forget history, whether it's good history or bad history. You should remember uh, history, and it's always interesting to talk about what you might have been doing when you were 10 years old or something. Nick mentioned the spirit of the lake. That's what Winnipesaukee is supposed to be, the great smile. The spirit, the smile, the spirit. Thank you so much. I'm Kay Pebble Bridges here on the Where's History page. And for yesterday's history today, tomorrow, next week, who cares? Because history is being written every day. I'd like to thank Bob Lott, my guest today. And, yeah. and of course, Nick Tambosi, our thank host. You. Thank you. you know what? We're pretty lucky. You folks, I hope you tune in next time. Thank you. Thank you for a good deal. Fun Spot is the largest arcade in the world. And you, you see my sign out here. Yeah, you got your own parking spot. Took me uh, 66 years to get, get your it. your own spot. <laughs> but I got it.